Hey guys, Lucky here, and this is my guide on the Diablo clone fight itself, and all of the detailed information that I know about this fight after doing about 500 Diablo clones itself in Season 2, and uh, doing hundreds of Diablo clones in Season 1, and just all the information that I've gathered on the fight so that you can equip yourself to try this fight with really any build um, knowing the details of the fight that you're going to know after this fight and if you want to try it with my hydra sorceress i'll have a little surprise for you at the end of this video so stick around uh, but i'm just going to get right into it now and start reviewing the fight so if you're new to project diablo 2 uh, the diablo clone fight is the end game boss essentially of the entire mod it is the hardest boss in the game and if you do not prepare for it appropriately, you are going to die. That's just a given. Um, so really, you want to equip yourself with all the information that you can. And I am here to provide you with that. So the difference between uh, Diablo clone in Project Diablo 2 and um, the regular Lord of Destruction is that the event is no longer summoned through the selling of SOJs on a particular server. You actually summon Diablo Clone with three materials that you can find in game. Those materials are the Black Soul Stone. This item drops from Uber Tristram bosses, Bale, Mephisto, and Diablo, with a one in three chance of dropping uh, from either of them. The second material is the Pure Demonic Essence. This drops from map bosses. Uh, it can drop from any map boss in the game. Maps are the end game content in Project Diablo 2, and they have a 1 in 100 chance of dropping. Uh, finally, the third ingredient, the Primeval Soul. This drops from Bale and Diablo on Hell difficulty, uh, the normal versions of them, and it also has a 1 in 100 chance of dropping. So essentially, you get these three items, you transmute them in your cube, and it leaves you with a vision of terror. The Vision of Terror is how you begin the Diablo Clone fight. Uh, then you fight Diablo Clone, and when you kill him, you are re re rewarded with uh, an Annihilus small charm just in Lord of Destruction. This is actually a perfect Annihilus that we found on our stream. Uh, so go ahead, uh, if you want to check out my, my stream, there's a clip of that. Uh, we found a perfect Annihilus this season through all of our Diablo clone fights. Uh, that was pretty great. And then another change, actually, in the Project Diablo 2 version of Diablo clone is that there is a chance for them to drop an incredibly rare item. These are the rare items in Season 2. We have a sword. We have an armor. A helmet boots and a claw now the odds of these dropping have been confirmed to be a one in 500 chance of dropping and actually we've done 500 clones and we were lucky enough to get one uh, i have a picture of it here so we were actually lucky enough to get the claw uh and we we just found this recently and uh it took us about 460 attempts to to get it but we, we finally got it, so that is another thing that can drop from Diablo Clone. It's just extremely rare. So, anyway, back to the fight. And I just want to give some stats on the Diablo Clone himself first, and then I'm going to start a fight, and we're going to go over all of his attacks and kind of how we prepare against them. So Diablo Clone himself has around 4 million life in Season 2. That's an approximate number. Uh, 2,500 defense, uh, 30 all resistance, and that's inclusive of physical and magic resistance. Uh, so that was a big change from Season 1, and it's something that's getting a lot of people tripped up. Diablo Clone only has 30 resistance, and in Project Diablo 2, you cannot drop a, an enemy's resistance below zero. So anything over 30 pierce is not going to be any more effective against the Diablo Clone fight. So... Uh, just keep that in mind when you're building your character. He has a 25% chance to block, 10% uh, drain effectiveness on your leech, and 75% curse reduction. So your curses will not last very long against him. 
Now I'm going to start the fight and I'll just review all of his attacks and uh, kind of what the damage they do are and uh, how we protect against them. So we start the fight and he's unleashing one of his fire novas here. Now these do about 3000 damage uh, before applying any of your resistances. So I'm running 95 fire resistance and a dwarf star. So it's not going to do a whole lot of damage to me. Uh, but say you weren't running uh, as much resistances and absorb as me. Um, this could potentially one shot you right when you start the fight. So uh, I'm going to get hit by this, but you'll see that it's not going to do a, a whole lot of damage. So now I go in. And I want to static the Cone because he can be static and you can apply Crushing Blow. Uh, this attack that he's using right here is his Lightning Laser. And now this does about 1000 damage per frame of 50% physical damage and 50% lightning damage. Uh, so it's very dangerous. We can only have 50% physical damage reduction so we can't really protect as much against the physical side of it. Uh, we do boost our lightning res on at least my character to uh, help mitigate some of the lightning portion of this attack. But uh, the way this attack works, uh, it is very easy to avoid. Really, essentially, you just run around in circles until um, he lets up. So um, we've got him down with our static field. And we see that now he's unleashing this bale style nova okay think of the stage as three different uh th think of the fight as three different stages this first bale style nova uh sequence indicates this end of the first stage of the fight he's going to unleash five bale style novas at this point in time and each one does significantly more damage than the previous one so this first Bale Style Nova is going to do about 3,000 damage of pure cold damage, uh, right? So it doesn't look like cold damage, but it is pure cold damage. And that's why we actually boost up our cold res a lot as well. So we're running 95% cold res on this build. Uh, so you'll see that it really doesn't do a whole lot of damage. Uh, but if you're not running cold res or you're just not well equipped to uh, take this attack because it, it attacks in... Um, varying uh, amounts that get higher as the Bell Novas go on. When you see the first one, that's a good indication to start hiding. Okay, we need to hide behind the pillars when this Bell Style Nova starts, uh, so that we can avoid getting hit by it. All right, and after five attacks of increasing damage. Uh, that indicates the end of stage one and now stage two. From each stage, we have uh, a little bit difference, a little bit of differences in the fight. Um, the pillars uh, outside of the ring are casting meteors and um, bone spirits, which they were doing in stage one, but it's not at the frequency that they will be doing it now. So you'll notice that they're casting a ton of these bone spirits and meteors. The bone spirits do uh, about a thousand physical damage on impact and then about 500 damage over time of both physical and magic damage uh, when their fire uh, hits the ground. So I'll, uh, I'll show you. Here's a bone spirit right here. The fire that it lays down, if you stand over this, that's doing a lot of magic and physical damage to you, and you cannot protect against it. So really, you cannot stand in this fire uh, that's left from the Bone Spirits without taking significant damage to your life, and it's just going to absolutely drain you. There's no way to protect against the magic damage at this point in the fight, so you really want to stay away from those. Uh, in addition, we're going to see an increase in the number of meteors uh, that the pillars are casting, okay? These meteors do about 1,000 physical damage and 15,000 fire damage uh, each one. They also pierce your fire resistances. But you'll notice on our build, actually, that we have over the 95 fire resistance, we have 146, so that when 
the meteors are hitting us and piercing about 50 uh, fire resistance. Uh, we are still maintaining our 95 fire resistance, so that really um, mitigates the blow a lot for us because those those meteors are extremely, extremely dangerous. Uh, another attack that the pillars are able to do is a uh, it is a melee lightning attack. They'll try to get hit by one real quick. Uh, if you stand too close to them, they will attack you with a sort of uh, lightning attack that deals around uh, 2700 lightning damage. Um, and it can hit you into your fast hit recovery breakpoint, so you really want to try to avoid standing too close to these pillars. Another uh, caveat of this fight, and it's something that you really need to pay attention to in Season 2, is that Diablo Clone is immune to damage whenever he has the Salvation Aura on. So you can see right now, he has the Salvation looking aura on, and he has it on right now because I am standing outside of the ring. The second I stand outside of the ring, he is no longer going to take damage from any attacks. So if I put my Hydras up and try to stand back and let them attack, you'll see that they are doing absolutely no damage to him. And they won't do, start to deal damage until I step into the ring. So the second I step into the ring, the aura is removed. So now you see it's gone and my Hydras are doing damage again. So if you're trying to deal damage to him from outside of the ring, you are not going to have any success in doing that. Okay, so he's doing a lot of his normal attacks. We're seeing a lot of meteors and bone spirits around. Uh, this is an attack I didn't go over yet. This is the firestorm attack. Uh, this can actually be particularly dangerous as well. You never want to stand in this because it does it does deal physical and fire damage over time. And based on how many of these projectiles you're getting hit by, it can really stack up. So when you see him doing this firestorm attack, you just want to step out of the way. A lot of this fight is just trying to avoid the more dangerous attacks that you're not well protected against while also taking him down okay <clears throat> so now he's done another bell style nova and this indicates the end of the second stage of the fight uh he's going to release uh, unleash another five of these novas and uh and then that will indicate that this third stage of the fight has begun uh, just another caveat about these bell style novas and the stage transitions is that he diablo clone is immune to all damage during these novas so he has the salvation aura on that you saw before uh, you can't deal damage to him anyway so really there is no benefit of staying in the ring and trying to tank through these because you cannot even damage him if you wanted to so really whenever you see this you want to find a safe spot to hide uh, this is always a great spot to hide as well uh, from the Bell style Novas. And like I said, they just they increase in damage each time. Uh, I've calculated the numbers. The first Nova does about 3,000 damage. Uh, then it gets increased to 4,500. Uh, then around 6,600. And then 9,000 damage. And then finally 12,000 damage on the last one. Uh, if you get hit by the last... Bell Nova, um, it's likely going to one-shot you, and this attack can shotgun, so you can get hit by multiple uh, projectiles, and, and really, it's it's enough to take you out in one shot, so make sure you hide. I cannot stress enough during these straight, these uh, stage transitions. The Bell Style Novas are done, and that's an indication that Stage 3 has now begun. Stage 3, the difference is... We get even more meteors and even more bone spirits than before. So we really need to watch where we're standing on the stage and uh, try to avoid especially the meteors because they hurt the most and then make sure we're not standing in any of the bone spirit fire. Uh, as the bone spirits move around, they will begin to explode and the fire damage is gonna, the fire on the ground is gonna last for 10 seconds. If it ever gets too crowded inside the ring, like it has here, you can easily just step out of the ring. You're not going to do damage, but you can wait the 10 seconds for those fires to uh, stop. They only take 10 seconds, and then you can get right back in the ring and, uh, and resume your fight. 
that's a good strategy if it gets too crowded in here with Bone Spirit Fire in your third stage to just get out, let everything reset and uh, regroup. You can put more potions in your belt. And, uh, it's really a good a good point to to kind of refuel and and regroup for the remainder of uh, stage three. Uh, after stage three, uh, it's the last stage of the fight, so he's no longer going to do those bell style novas, and uh, you're pretty much in the clear at this point. Uh, it's 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 the you've gotten past the hardest point, right? Those bell style novas and the stage transitions are really what's going to be dealing the most damage to you and when you're in the most trouble. So, there we have it. We've taken down Diablo Clone. We have received our Annihilus Small Charm. The thing about this fight also, when you're done, you can go in, uh, you can drop your Annihilus, go pick up the new one. Uh, ID it, have one of your buddies come into this game, or if it's permed, just leave and come grab it. Grab your old one. So you can go into this fight with an Annihilus Small Charm already. So, that was that. Uh, you'll notice that I was able to pause this fight uh, while I was um, while I was doing it, and that's because a friend of ours actually made an exact copy of my sorceress that I use on the live realm on ladder in single player. And what uh, I was I was wanting you guys to stick around to the end because I am going to be linking. Uh, in this, in the description, a link to this single player file character so that you can go in and actually practice this fight yourself uh, with my exact character that I'm playing with on the ladder. So I think that's pretty cool. And I hope you guys have fun with it because I want everyone to experience this fight. Uh, it will come with this whole inventory of potions and visions. Um, remember, all you have to do is right click to start the fight. Uh, and I hope you guys have a lot of fun with it and uh, and then can kind of get a feeling for uh, the fight and uh, and then the character that I use to get it. So if you have any questions on the build, just download the single player file character and you can see everything for yourself. You can play it for yourself. Uh, you can check all the skills. You can play around with it. You can change things around. And uh, also now you have all the information you need to come up with some builds of your own. Uh, I'd be really curious to see what you guys come up with knowing what you know now uh, and uh, and I'd be curious to see what other builds are out there. This is the, obviously my Hydra Sorceress is the build that I think is is the fastest but um, with this information that is out there now I'd like to see if you guys have any ideas, leave them in the comments, let me know. But I hope you appreciated this video and this information, and I hope you have good luck on all of your future Diablo Clone fights. Um, thank you guys, and uh, I'll see you around.